fail to download files. Hang on, let me add people to tell them I'm here. And you know what? I'll add the Twitch DOSBox X thing as well. Why is my keyboard like this? It's always bumpy. What's my table? I'm using a trestle table. It's horrible. Don't use a trestle table as your desk. All right, let's go. It's gonna be a quiet stream today. Um, starting off with it not being able to connect to the internet, which is uh, not great for programming a Twitch DOS spot. So it can connect to the internet. It just chooses not to, huh? Um, can we do some updates? There we go. What do we got? Stuff. Does that include flat packs? Oh, that would be so good. No, it doesn't. Okay, we're gonna have to update flat packs too. Just doing some housekeeping. How's your day, hypothetical chat? Uh. It was good. That's good. <laughs> uh, failed to download package files. Check your internet connection. You know what? We're going to do... I know this is going to eat into a little bit of time, but I think I'm having some mirror issue. So let's see. Updates. One, two. Download from main server. Let's try that. I mean, it got the it got the cache, so I don't know. I don't know what it's upset about. All right, let's go to bot, and let's do our run and see what it does. Nothing. Send fax to one. T okay, I'm not gonna fax anywhere today. Open up our little dev environment. Um, so we're gonna edit test server. Yeah. Um, so let's run test server. And then let's run, I think it's just bot. No, this is connected to the to the real one, isn't it? All right, we'll have to change that. Um, there's a variety of things we can do today. Um, you gonna update now? Please. Please update. Ah, oh, it's a Christmas miracle. All right, so let's edit our code. Uh, where is it? Drive C code bot. Um, I think it's in the logic.assembly and we have, holy crap, why did I put all this in here? Um, let's just quickly take away some notes here. Um, yeah, we'll worry about all that later. Use a jukebot, zero jukebot. So we should probably um, edit that in bot.cpp. Or is it state.assembly? I think it's state.assembly. Um, so use a jukebot. I think it was star zero jukebot. And let's do, what buffer was that? Buffer two, zero star. All right, um, zero star. There we go. Um, wait, is this the right file? No. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So what else do we have? No, it's logic. Okay, um, log output for debugging, ignore empty messages. I don't know what that means exactly. We have the things we have to pass there. We have some more stuff to sand at the start. Uh, we should probably, I don't know how early we're supposed to send that cap rec twitch tv slash commands. Um, then we have the pass format here. Um, some way to handle general errors. Yeah, we're just going to quit. Um, ignore if there's no source. I don't know what source is. Send quit. That's right. We should probably send quit to, um, at some point. Um, but all of this is not that useful if we have to keep modifying the code in order to connect to the, to the dang server. So, um, we want to, what's in our bot.cpp. Is it all caps? Yeah. Um, do we have a to do at the top of here? No, we need to make a to do file. Okay. Um, just write that and let's go to buffer two and we'll just jump this, um, down to to do. I need to write. Okay. Thanks, Nim. Usually I have that turned off, but I'm not really using the regular, um, a Vim I'm using. Do you have any to do's in here? Yeah. Not much, it's fine. Um, and then we have logic.assembly. Yeah, um, uh, B2. Um, no, I think these are around the wrong way. So this would be state.assembly. So the things I wanna focus on here is read the host man, read the host man, read the login sequence from file. Um, yeah, let's do that. Although let's try and put um, cap rec in the login sequence and just see what happens. Um, my guess is that it should work, right? Um, the server would buffer it. Although, we should probably have a state where it waits for a success showing that it's got the message of the day um, before we do that. So, uh, message of the day, because I assume that if we get a correct login, we will get the message of the day, which is 376. Yeah, so. Yeah. And that does make you think, should we be moving logic out of state.assembly to logic.assembly? Well, if we go to state.assembly, we have state auth there, and then we do the dispatching. So I guess we could just have a state auth next, where it's like, we run the state until, um, wait, then there's state get packet. Yeah, that's just sending the initial stuff. Hmm. We have state um, dispatch. We could probably move state auth into into logic.asm, we would just have to put a separate state machine there. That could work. Um, is there a reason why we wouldn't want to do that though? Because it looks like we're just sending stuff there. No, I imagine that would be a good idea. So, and then this file would just be for dispatch. Okay, we shall try that perhaps. Uh, move state auth to logic. Why am I putting like the comments at the start of these? We don't need to do that. That's a little bit silly. 
but I also need to indent, I don't know. Um, so we have two things here. We have some stuff that we should probably handle with files, like log output for debugging, um, stuff to do with files. We probably want to log output for debugging, although are we already doing this with the MTCP debug? If we edit mtcp.config, which is not the correct file, it would be mtcp.config here. Um, no, that's not it. I think it might be in the test thing. If we edit the test.py, which we will probably want to merge later. Um, once we have pings done, merge test.py with some test commands. I'll probably know what that means in the future. So we have here, why am I opening it? There, we can just do test dosbox.test.configuration. Yeah, so we set log file and we set debugging. So perhaps we should have um, some kind of uh, log file of our own. That would be helpful for development, I think. Um, so that way it would be basically like printf, but instead of printing to the screen, we could also print to the screen, I suppose. Um, so I guess today we're going to implement a little logging framework. Um, but before that, we're also going to um, read host name plus port plus login sequence from file. This is a bit complicated. We probably don't need to handle the login sequence at the moment. The main thing is host name and port. So how could we do that? We could just, hmm. We should probably just make them program arguments, right? Unless we're going to have some kind of configuration, but then we can just use environment variables for configuration, can't we? Um, how do environment variables work in DOS? Is there a penalty to using them? Like, am I gonna overflow the DOS stack? I'm not gonna put anything too big in it, I don't think. I'll restart later. Ooh, you almost got me with it. Uh, so let's see, DOS get environment variable. Um, DOS interrupts, that's probably the best way to start it. Although we also do have a DOS implementation called DOSBox, that would probably be a good reference. Um, you also need to yeah, use this for handling files. This is abridged. Is there a non-abridged file? Um, environment variable? Hmm. What does Wikipedia say? Wikipedia is not, Wikipedia has a weird mix of like reference material, but then they're also like, we need it to be a summary. So I, I don't know why they do that environment. Okay, so um, there's no use really looking it up if we can just dig into the source code. So let's look at DOSBox. Um, which is our implementation. Let's open up another terminal for this so I don't get too confused. Um, where is my DOSBox source code? Let's pull it, sure. Why not? Um, and let's also give it a clean, unless I've done something like important here, no. Um, Flat pack repo. 
help. I just need to check if. Hmm. Oh, I do mean remotes. Um, let's just delete my repo. I do delete my repo. Okay, that's not cool. You can't just have like, I don't know, remote delete. Flat pack remote delete my repo. Yeah, just so it doesn't get too out of control and error all the time. So let's go, I guess, get env. Um, I know there's a big file for int 21. So let's try and just do a find name in 21. Um, just 21? No, that will find everything. Um, I think it was dos.cpp. Let's try and start there. Source dos. Yeah, we don't need tmux for this, I don't think. dos.cpp. And let's see if we can find the 21 handler. DOS 21 handler. Um, and then this has all the ugly warts. Um, shout out to John Campbell and the DOSBox X Discord. There's a lot of really cool nerdy knowledge there. So I suggest going there if you like DOS. All right, so we have all these commands. Rename file. What is an FCB? Read random record from CB. Pass file name into FCB. There's the real time stuff. There's the system date. I've got an email. Let me just check that. I don't know. Does a Zoom webinar for me? No. No, no, no. System time. All right, so there's also terminate and stay resident. Oh yeah, lots of crazy fixes. Um, that's one thing I like about DOSBox is that um, it's kind of crazy. It has a lot of complexity just by the nature of its job. Uh, trying to run applications. Uh, all right, write file to disk or drive, seek, IOC tell, allocate free, exec, um, undocumented stuff. That's always the best type of documentation if you think about it. Um, if it works, just ship it. Network and printer function. So is there no environment stuff? Cause we're getting, we're getting up there. <laughs> um, what we can actually do is just skip all that. Code pages, serial numbers on the disk. That reminds me, I was trying to get multi-theft auto to work on Linux. Um, it booted up, but then it froze and said there's a serial error. So I was like, okay, this is an open source project. I will just download the code and figure out why this isn't working. Um, and to my kind of semi surprise, all right, so it doesn't look like there's anything here about environment verse. Let me continue my antidote while I search. Um, to my surprise, um, there is code in there that is not actually in um, the um, source code repo, like the actual code you get for Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is um, what would you call it? I guess it's proprietary, even though it says it's GPL version three. Um, so I, 
I got really interested and I was like, okay, I'll open up Wireshark. And it's like, it uses its own custom encryption thing, which is probably like just to deter people like me from sniffing around. And it also uh, like tries to find a debugger and cuts it off. And I was like searching for a little bit. Then I was like, you know what, this, I don't like this. Although you can download like a server hosting thing and that will somehow make it work. So what I assume is happening is that you are associating, um, you are associating your IP address with a serial number that is kind of tied to your hardware. And to prevent cheaters, they kind of try and tie it in a way that is hard to change. Like probably your Mac address mixed with other stuff. Um, and I guess wine doesn't support that. Or maybe it checks for wine. I'm not too sure. I think more likely what happens is that wine's implementation is generating the same serial um, or something like that for everyone who uses wine. I don't know. I didn't see anything to do here with environments, but I did learn something about the environment block. Let's search that up a little bit. Although we should probably just do a quick sanity check. Is there an env here? What's in the DOS folder? Um, DOS tables, DOS execute. It might be in DOS execute. Let's, let's humble ourselves for a second. Um, <clears throat> that's the exe header. We do have some environment stuff here. Let's see. Make env. And then I guess it copies the env. So parent env and block copy. So could it be that um, there's no interrupt for this? Um, there's probably some wrappers here, right? Um, environment, set environment. So that's in the PSP, which is the, I think program something. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I knew it at one, at one second, at uh, one point. Um, so we have make and then, so in the same, um, idea, do we have get env, PSP, get environment, set environment, getting more emails. I need to like disable that. I need to get, get off, stop the emails. Um, so we have a shell and that uses get env string. So we're going to have to have a look here. If this is part of the DOS API or it's something libc needs to do. So in DOSBox X, they have a lot of code that calls the DOS kernel itself from C. It's a, it's a very strange, um, but it looks like perhaps this uses this to locate the environment. Then it's separated by null pointers. All right. So to answer my question in the first place, um, the DOS PSP, let's search that up. Program segment prefix. Um, how big is it? Command line, 127 bytes. It's so small compared to everything else I've ever used. Um, environment segment, segment. Hmm. Uh, is there anything else in here? Environment segment. Interesting. Program should first try to retrieve the command line from the environment variable command line. 
Is that a real page? Or DOS and MS DOS 7.0. Does DOSBox support that? No. Hmm. Let's check out to see if FreeDOS supports that. Um, it should be on GitHub. Um, I think it's in kernel and it's probably in Freecom, right? Um, no, it probably is in Freecom. That's the thing that would set this. So let's search up command line. Um, case sensitive, please. Um, GitHub, can you do case sensitivity for me? You can't. All right, let's just quickly yeet on this. Git grab command line. It looks like it might. Um, docs history dot text. Oh, I love it when people give change logs. Um, so I guess DOSBox wouldn't actually need, well, DOSBox's shell would need to support this, right? Um, interesting. It really doesn't support that. Um, does my program support that? Let's go to our code and our, I think it would be in object. No, it's in bot.exe. Let's just grep command line here. No, I don't think my bot supports that. Uh, bot.exe grep command line. Um, <laughs> this is way too much research about this. Um, let's see if Whatcom supports the command line. Because if it does, we could just use command line arguments and not have to worry about the length. Um, but then again, that just uses environment stuff anyway. Is there an issue about this? Probably not. Um, once again, let's just clone this because no, we're not going to clone the search GitHub. Don't I have the source around? I probably do. All right, so FreeDOS supports it. Um, MS-DOS 7, that's from Windows Millennium, isn't it? That's from 95. A lot of strange stuff happening over there. Um, through the PSP or related API functions. Um, okay, so is there any DOS stuff? I mean, I guess there wouldn't be a system call to iterate through the environment segment. Um, so we wanna know what Whatcom's gonna do. Um, is it gonna read the command line? Uh, it's got some macros. We should just search command line with the things around it. Um, and it doesn't look like it. Uh, what we can do is do git grep uh, get env. And it should be in clib environment c. Uh, I don't think this is the correct thing. It would be in clib for dos. DOS. DOS main. DOS 4GW. Oh, it's probably not linked in. Um, I find the environment string. So this will do F name, read environment. 
Oh, I guess the environment thing is just similar across platforms. Um, if we do get an hash command line, is that case insensitive? I guess Whatcom doesn't do that either. Weird. All right, that's fine. Um, there might be something to think about to add in DOSBox X, maybe. Anyway, um, we're going to use environment variables and we're going to use get env. So um, we're going to specify the following environments. We're going to have to prefix them. Um, so we'll just do how long can the names be? Probably unlimited, right? Um, if it's freeform like that, although the shell probably limits how long they are. Um, let's once again search up git grep set. Wait, that should probably be in the shell, right? Set. Set env. Um, where would that be? source misc programs. So this is the glue that DOSBox is using. So we're going to do set env and we're just going to see if there is a limit. Oh, damn. Whenever you modify the environment, it has to modify all the, uh, all the stuff. Ah, that's gross. That hurts. But I understand. Okay. Um, so let's look how easy this would be to implement in MTCP. So let's do, I think it's bot.cpp. So we have our host name here, which is an IP version for address and a port, which is an int. So how would we pass this? Um, probably the best way would be using scanf. I feel like I've talked about this already. Um, no, uh, pretty sure I talked about scanf. Yeah, I might have used it in the test code, but um, I guess what our game plan here is going to be um, is to have a global variable and we will have bot host um, and that will be equal to 10.0.2 um, 6666 or whatever. And I mean, that kind of sucks that we can't use the command line. Oh, we can use the command line, can't we? Um, I don't know. We'll use environmental variables. So bot host Uh, ten point zero point zero point two six 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 six, and we will have a default there, and we will also have. Um, we don't need to do anything else than that, I don't think. All right, so let's try implementing that. Um, so we have the stuff here. So we will do. Um, we'll make a function here called um, get host details. We will take, uh, yeah, we will take a IP address T pointer um, address and then you went 16 T Hey Kaz, didn't you see my um, post on Mastodon? 
and we don't need to mess with the source port at all. So what we shall do then here, um, oh, sh oh, oh damn, I just realized, can I not? I don't know what C stuff I can do. Like, can I just assign stuff like that? Um, let's try this address equals that. I don't know if you can do that with the constructor syntax and desk port equals 6667. And then let's just try doing zero, zero. Um, actually it's set it to something that definitely won't work. Uh, what? Wow, IP version four. It definitely doesn't have any addresses. Um, we'll set it to six, six. You know, we could just set it to like an invalid address. Why are you gonna be passive aggressive about that? Is it because I didn't manually send you? I thought you went to sleep already or something. Um, you gotta chill a little bit, buddy. You know, you're taking the, the growth hormones I've been telling you to. Um, so server address and a desk port. Yeah, you got to take them. I found them on eBay. Um, I paid a lot of money for them. The guy said, oh no, oh no, oh no. Everything's gone bad. Compiler errors, um, syntax error. 22. So we definitely can't do that. And it was also, so uh, we should probably do, I guess we could mem copy it, but it would probably be a better idea to just, um, what's, the, what file is it? Um, let's grep um, MTCP. Let's grep that. Yeah, I know it's a directory, R. So you can't grep stuff, can you, Vim? Oh, Vim grep, you're, you're awful. Why can't you? It's okay, I'm not gonna get mad at Vim. It's just because I haven't configured it correctly, even though uh, it seems like something you should be able to do, and I'm not mad at all. Um. It's fine. All right, so it should be in a header somewhere. The dangers of DIY medical care. Don't most people who wanna take uh, hormones and stuff, they wanna go to the doctor and ask, right? It's like, probably wouldn't go to the street if they didn't have to. I mean, people, when they're desperate, they don't make, well, they see hope and they're like, well, I gotta, I gotta do this. Otherwise I don't have anything left. IP address T. So you're just using it as an extern, are you? All right, whatever, sure. It should be in the include, shouldn't it? I'm not grabbing the right folder. It should be in MTCP. No, it's not. Of course not. I'm in the wrong folder. Code, um, TCP ink. Let's do a grep there. Um, I want to believe it's in IP.h, but it doesn't look like it's in IP.h. An IP version four address is four bytes. All right, that's fair. Do I wish assembly would make a comeback in regular programming? No. <laughs> Does that answer it? <laughs> so let's just set the bytes manually. Um, arrays are just pointers, I think. Probably not right. Probably have to get them to be the right type in order to do that kind of 
um, stuff. Um, so in advance of being a smarty pants, we're just gonna try this. I don't know about that. I guess I don't need to set like defaults there. Um, I don't know about that. That seems like it's gonna copy an array on the stack. Right operand is type left on, fresh on the left is an array. I, uh, it's kind of silly, but I feel a bit more at home in C <laughs> than I do, no, at, at home in assembly than I do C, simply because assembly's syntax, oh, I mean, I guess even 8086 syntax is a bit weird. Let's make this a pointer. Will that help? Will it auto make a pointer? Am I compiling this in C++ mode? Right, C++ has different rules, doesn't it? Oh no. Assembly program matrix. Oh no. Function arguments do not match those in the prototype. Get host details. Cannot convert argument one. All right, yeah, so let's do, an, uh, do a thing there. Oh, compiler errors and array might not produce the intended result. Oh, please. That is fair though. I did say I would return something and then I didn't. Um, I've been bitten by that in someone else's code. Don't do that. It's not nice seeing GCC generate code where it's just like, why add a return statement when you can just run the uh, data we've attached to the end of the function? That seems fine, right? Oh, oh, oh. Um. Oh, IP address T is an array. Oh, I'm such a, I'm saying that I'm supposed to be having four IP address T's. A soft pause and you feel blessed. Yeah. Error, expression on left is an array. Left operand is type. All right. What do you want me to do about that, please? Please? Why wouldn't it produce intended results? Why is this so difficult? Why would it not return? What does that mean? Array may not produce intended results. I want a pointer to it, yes? Or is it that it's a pointer to the array itself? Oh, arrays. Okay. Oh, oh dear. Um... C array pass by value. Let's try to figure this out. You pass the address of the array, probably. I don't care about trending sort. Okay, so the array is not being copied. So we should just possibly not use a pointer at all um, because arrays are special. And let's see if this connects or it doesn't and it just, okay, that corrects, that connects. So what we're going to do is um, fill in with some defaults. Maybe? Yeah. Um, set default detail. Oh, I don't want to go too low. I, I can do that. This is my code. Um, so we do set default details address 
test port and we pass that through. Um, and then that will do that. So what have you been up to, Kaz? I'm sorry I disappeared earlier. I was tired and I had to have a quick six hour nap. Okay, that seems to work. The best part of C is that it's, it's hard to tell if it's actually working or it just seems to work because sometimes it will just have random stuff positioned in just the right way that uh, errors just work. Fantastic. Am I going to put a little C? That's a copyright symbol. I think I do. Ha oh, I don't have one at the top. I guess this is just copyright me. It's supposed to be copyright GPL. A little breakdown. That's okay. That's getting better than normal. So we have set default details and we're going to do um, get environment details. Pokemon clicker game and it's really fun. So today we're going to be using scan F to scan stuff. If that makes sense. Um, so let's open up the man page for scan F string scan F. And we're just going to assume that it's the same in what com because why would it not be? Um, so we're going to do int scanned because it returns the, the account, the number that we've scanned. Uh, we should probably do um, environment string um, or rather details. And then we're going to get invent bot host host. Yeah, we'll just do bot host. Um, if there's no details, then we would just, um, do you think GUI is ruined the beauty and simplicity of printf? I don't know. It certainly made it harder to draw stuff on the screen. Uh, we're actually going to return a int for this. We're going to do if not get in environment details address test port. Um, then we will set the default details. I don't know why it's tabbing so much. Um, if details in scanned, um, it, no, if no details, we're going to return zero. That's nice. Um, and in scanned equals scan F. So let's do details. And I guess the format is going to be I point I point I point I port I and then a character at the end. Uh, the character at the end is to check that there's nothing else. So it will only read one, two, three, four, five things. And then we have to do car canary and then we're going to have to pass in all the stuff. So address zero, address one, address two, address three, um, guest port canary. Um, if scanned doesn't equal, is this wholesome coding screen streams? Then we would just return zero. And it's important here because that means it will overwrite it with the set default details. And then we return one. Um, now the first thing I'm actually going to do, uh, that should be fine, right? That seems fine. Um, but we're also going to add a printf, um, printf, Post details I point I point I point I I and then we're going to print much of the same stuff and then and, uh, N. 
That seems fine. Let's see how much it's errored. Let's try and review it first, maybe. So let's see. Details, get invent, hope, got host. There's no details, return zero. We scan F details. I, 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 I. Those should be bytes, right? Um, we need to set that to be a byte. 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 Can we read just a byte? This is where things get a little bit tricky. Because C will promote it to bytes, but um, let's do address zero, address one, address two, address three. And then we're going to have to end them. That should probably be an array. Um, into dress. Um, int into dress, and then we'll have four of those. Um, dest port that can be that's a short int dest. All right, so first we check if we manage to scan them all into our um, int stuff. And we do for int i equals zero, i under four, plus plus i. And then we're going to do um, if i, uh, we're gonna do int address equals int address four. Um, Hiccups, oh no, what's wrong? Uh, what's the what's the term for the address here? I think it's an octet. Um, if octet less than zero or octet greater than 255. Yeah, um, then we will have to return zero. Um, otherwise we will set address I equals uint eight T octet. Um, and then we'll do the same kind of thing with the canary, except, um, if, um, if int dest equals zero int dest um, what is that? That's six, five, five, three, six. So we'll put six, five, five there. Um, and then there's nothing good or sacred about hiccups. You're a hiccup. Um, we're going to do, what do we think? I think it's um, dest port equals u int 16 t dest port. Um, there is actually potential. For some refactoring here, so why not do that? Int set if um, in range. Um, so we're going to take Oh, we can't do that because we're not polymorphic, are we? No. Maybe? Hmm. Because it would be setting a value, but it wouldn't know the type. It could be a macro, but that's a nightmare. So we're not going to do that. We will just write this and we will be pleased about it. Um, actually, one other thing we're going to do is do this. So it looks like it's in a number line. If zero is greater, no less than. Now it's in range. Um, hang on, let's put it this way and then flip that around. There we go. 
Now it's like a number line. You can put monads wherever you want, my friend. So octet is between zero and 255. And if it is, it sets it. Otherwise it returns zero. And then we have the same thing here. Um, could be made into a macro. We're not going to really bother. Um, so this looks fine. Scanned doesn't equals five. So that should be one, two, three, four, five. And we've got all that um, set to font details. That seems is fine. Um, and let's W make this. Octet has not been declared. Conditional expression is always true. Non-zero. Oh shit. Oh my God. I mean, I'm not the smartest person in the room. I thought I was programming for a 32 bit machine. Wow. Um, that means we can just skip the comparison there. Um, wait, no, these are signed. Um, actually, is there a way to do unsigned? Unsigned. Unsigned octal integra. Inter <laughs> integra. <laughs> um, so we're going to use U instead. I don't know. Um, it'd be a good room. So these are all integers. Um, let's set this to be dast port, which is already a pointer. Oh dear. I got, I got bamboozled pretty hard actually. Um, don't be like that. Sorry, someone's messaging me and they showed me something interesting. And now I'm like, hmm, that seems to be interesting. Now these are guaranteed to be signed. So let's just, well, there's no point checking. Um, although if I do unsigned here, um, then we can do int octet equals int address two. Um, that would be unsigned. And then if octet is less than, I guess, or equal to 255, that's not a smart one there for me, is it? Um, address I equals unsigned int eight octet. So let's see if we can fix this before we, we're like an hour into the stream. Um, are we making good time? I don't know. Octect. I have to spell things right or the computer doesn't know. Octect, I'm also spelling it somewhere else as Octec. Octet. I think that's right. Right? I think so. <laughs> oh no, I spelled it wrong twice. Might as well just spell it wrong all the other places. So let's try. Okay, so it finds the correct host there. Um, a, a, a hello. Bad command. Okay, set bot host to hello and we'll see if the bot still. Okay, so that didn't work. Um, good, it shouldn't work. Um, 
let's also try bot host equals 10.0.0.5.2.1234. That didn't work. It didn't work. Oh, my hubris of not having error codes. Um. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. So we're going to return one here, two here, three plus I. Return zero here. Bless me. Thank you. Thank you, Father. So we're going to return um, an error code. Um, if error, then we're going to print F, not able to read a bot host, <laughs> um, um, error equals I, I don't know why, but I sneeze a lot. Every time I sneeze, I don't know. That's weird, isn't it? I, it's not weird. It's what humans do, but um, it's just one of those things where like, I'm just sneezing and everyone's like getting up, getting like, are you okay? It's like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm fine. The sneeze. So it's scanning more than five there, which makes sense. So let's return that. Error equals three. So one of my octets, octet number one, is not less than 255. Oh no. Oh dear. Oh, something has gone very, very wrong. Um, let's add a printf. Um, octet. <laughs> spelled it wrong again. Is it octet? Is it octet? Is it octet? Octet. All right. I know now. Um, that's a lot. Yeah. I spelled it wrong again. Oh my God. I need to get out of this. I need to start a new life. One that doesn't involve spelling. Um, but so octet is five, nine, seven, one. Now, I don't know about you, but that 10 looks like a 10 to me. So, not exactly sure what's happening. Here's what we'll do. We will actually move the scanner check down here just so that we can see exactly what it's reading. I can spell as a treat. Yeah. Um, but octet is 17986. Octet is 2965. Hmm. Shouldn't be giving me different values, you know. That's a bit sus as... Is it because I hard-coded a four there? Is that why? That wouldn't make too much sense, right? Octet is zero, octet is 2007. Is that uninitialized? No, it seems okay. Um, uh, mm. What is happening here? You know what? It would be interesting to know the scanned value.
Oh, writing passes. Let's see. So it's scanned five there, which is good. So if I change this just like that, it's gonna scan one. All right, so the scanning part is correct. I did something right. Um, so 10.0.5.2. Host details, 10.0.0.2. Um, it says octet is 18573. Hmm, you know, let's actually just print all the octets. Just ahead of what we're doing. Wait, what was that? Null assignment detected? What did I do? I'm confused now, hang on. Just check that that's not like casting wrong or something. Uh, people who know C are going to be yelling at me. Null assignment detected. Ten point O. Octet one is O. So if I change that to one, does it go up to one? No. Uh. Um, what if I just change that to I? What if U is not what I think it is because I'm reading the wrong manual? Or alternately, is it because I'm not using an and here? I think that might be what's happening and that would explain the null assignment if it's assigning to the zero or whatever. You can yell at me regardless, it's okay. Um, roast me. That's what they say. Oh no, we've broken the environment. Quick, sorry DOSBox. Writing to memory that does not belong to you cause problem. Oh, it worked, I think. No, it didn't work. Oh, because I didn't set it. 10.0.2.26666. Oh, that worked. All right, so that was what the issue was. Um, it was just me being pathetic. And you know what, let's just always read bot host. Who cares? Puts me in the oven at 140 degrees. We'll put you in my oven. Yeah, you're supposed to be doing that. And let's just dump this down here actually. Should I be freeing the socket? Clean up socket. What happens if set, set up socket failed? It just returns one. That's fine, probably. I don't know, whatever. Um, let's make these the same issue. Set up socket, unable to read bot host. Um, We should put address here and just change that to address. And then we'll dump this code. That seems fine. That seems fine to me.
There's a riot that has the oven on and kills you? A function arguments not match those. Cannot convert argument to. All right. It wants me to convert it to a pointer. Maybe. Something's fishy about this. Big fish. Um, source conversion type is unsigned short. Conversion type, so this is at line 63. Oh, it's the desk port. I didn't desk port it. I know in C++ you can use references. I understand. The next thing we're going to do is just add the DOSBox config to do bot host equals 10.0.0.26667. And then that way I can just open it up and do bot. Should be 2.2. So hooray, this has been a celebration perhaps. But that also means I can do, I could make a, um, a batch file that just does, that does test uh, bot, doesn't it? Um, edit bot test dot bat. We're going to do set bot host equals 10.0.2.26667. Um, save, please. Exit. Bot test. Oh, that just edits my environment. I don't like that. How do you not do that? <laughs> um, uh oh. Set bot host equals old host. And then I guess we should do here set old host equals bot host. And then I guess we just do set old host. That should work fine. Probably. I don't know. 6667. Bot test. Get. How do you read the environment? All right, just set. Yeah, it looks fine. Um, can we do the echo off though? I don't want that. Is that uh NT thing there? Bot test, please. Yes. Okay. And now if we run this, we can see it's crashing because um, I've changed my code. So let's do test server. Jukebot. Um, so when we require the login, um, we should read check all the names are the same. Um, so we shouldn't do that. Echoes are scary. I think if you think you're alone, yeah, it's like when you're out, when you're in your room at night and you're like, you hear like, uh, chains and stuff. The sound of chains is kind of relaxing if you think about it. Um, uh, right, so that's where all the names should be. So probably not user two and three. Um, and then we have to assert user two equals zero and then user three equals star. Check the second and third arguments to user. So that should be correct there, I think. Would 
would I live in Texas Chainsaw Massacre? I don't know. What's the rent like? That's the thing now, isn't it? Um, uh oh. Uh oh, spaghetti. Oh. Just have a little bit of a freeze. It's fine. All right, that's all good then. What's next on our to do? Um, log output for debugging. So I want to kind of do this from DOS. Ugh. <sighs> so we're going to create a log file. Um, so let's do code bot. Um, okay, I don't know why X does that. Help, please. No, Vim, Vim, no, mate terminal, no. I want to use F1, please. Please. Um, I guess I'll just make a new thing. $2 minimum wage. That's, that is, is that the minimum they could set? <laughs> All right, so let's um, write this to drive C, um, code, bot, log.assembler um, edit let's find the right and then we'll edit log.assembler and let's see we have printf and we have send packet we won't need that um, log line and we have our print format here there's print format 2 so we should probably have log um, outgoing and then we call print format, uh, print format outgoing. Um, and then we have incoming. What is this doing here? Get that junk out of here, disgusting. Crikey. All right. Log incoming should be this. Log incoming. Um, print format incoming. Um, and then we pop our stuff. And then we ret. That seems fine. Um, So we push SI and CX and CX again. I don't know why. It, oh yeah, because we're using that twice. All right. Um, we removed the strange thing there. Um, we don't want to, we want to push AX there because we're going to clobber it. And then we pop AX. Uh, we're clobbering everything here. Um, we just should subtract the um, stack pointer. String index links return CX um, returns nothing. All right, so let's go to our state, our logic. Um, and then when we dispatch a line, we're going to um, let's do extern log outgoing and we're going to do call log outgoing that would be good wouldn't it if we can just call log outgoing there um, no that should be log income Oh my God, I'm getting so confused, unreasonably confused. Um, so this should be log outgoing. Yep, 
feel proud of me? Thank you. Um, I still forget who's supposed to preserve what registers. Um, I don't know if I've ever decided on that, but I guess I would rather just have the, um, I would rather have the functions that we call preserve registers. So callee preserves registers. Or is it caller? No, caller preserves it. All right. So call logout going. We'll just say that it clobbers. Um, it doesn't clobber anything. Um, and this should do clobbers. What does this clobber? It shouldn't clobber anything. Clobbers nothing. Uh, clobbers SICX. No, it doesn't. Clobbers SICX. I think. I don't know. I have to think about that in a minute. We'll worry about that in a minute. Let's just try and see if this works. All right, I forgot to edit the make file. Drive C, code, make file. Um, then we have logic, then we have um, log.object. Um, you can see here, we've got some Kind of trash shit going on here. Probably should fix that maybe. Um, hmm. All right, let's try fixing it now. We're gonna make this a dot nasm dot obj. Let's kind of call it nasm with I think object dot object. What is the F there? That's the file. All right. Um. So I guess that's that. And then we do object. That's that. Um, dot nasm dot obj. And then we'll just change all this to log dot obj, nasm dot obj, nasm dot obj. All right. Uh, this is gonna be fun. Nasm.org is not defined. I defined it down here, fucker. Sorry, I'm getting angry at my computer. Um, mm. All right, I see. I see. I see. So if we do that there, then this will check and find the .asm file and try and eat it using .nasm. Extensions nasm dot obj not defined. <laughs> Just trying to execute my instructions. Yeah. Command list does not belong to any target. How do I define an extension? I would have to, okay, what about bot slash dot asm dot obj? Oh dear. Uh oh. Nuh uh. 
Um, I think that's trying to pass it using WASM. What if we just do this for now and we just see if this works. Object file. Okay, so that should be dot obj and that should be dot asm. Command list does not belong to any target. 23. I commented that, that out, bitch. What? All right, it's fine. It's fine. Um, so what if we do that? That should be fine. Del object slash bot. No existing file matches slash bot slash assembly dot bot. So we're gonna just change the file names to NASM, I guess. Oh dear. So let's try this. Um, drive C code bot bot um, copy logic dot assembly uh, logic dot NASM. Uh, we're gonna have to do that anyway. Um, move logic dot asm logic dot nasm move state dot assembly state dot nasm move log dot assembly log dot nasm I think I did that right no existing file matches nasm dot obj um that's fine So I guess I just do NASM there and we remove that from the bot and test there. Will that define the extension? Extensions NASM not defined. Oh, that should be that.obj. Extensions not defined. Command list does not belong to any target. Okay, so we need to define a new NASM thing. And that's fine. That's fine. We're just gonna have to open up the, the Whatcom linker documentation. I think it's link guide. Um, extension. No, not linker, make, make. It'd be in tools, I think. Um, make. Um, defining recognized file extensions, page 102. You ever think they're gonna have like PDF support and offset thing? All right, extensions. Suffixes. Okay, so we just have to do that, All right? Do I need to use an equals or is that like the, no, it's like a thing. All right, so um, asm nasm cpp. Do I have to put a dot there? And probably dot C if there's anything. Asm C CPP. So I guess those are already defined. So let's just do dot NASM. So 
state.obj does not exist and cannot be made from existing files. Um, oh, that's fine. That's fine. It's fine. This is all fine. Okay. State.obj does not exist and cannot be made from existing files. Why is this? I shall ask a scholar. It's all good. This is a okay. Um, hang on a second. Is this because it's caching the directory? State.obj does not exist and cannot be made from existing files. Why not? That's a meme now, isn't it? Why not the meme? I'm getting with my memes. I think. Um, let's do a sanity check and just do dirbot dot nas. Okay, so is Whatcom not able to read long file names? So let's do nasm and just do dot nas. And then let's fix the actual thing. Um, why can't you do this, computer? Um, dot nas. This is fine. You're going to be able to understand this, probably. This is not the. This is not the method of a madman, desperately trying to save a few lines of code. So it was that. It was the 8.3 limit. Check this out, kids. Oh, <laughs> undefined symbol. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah, but I, this is the three start vim. Oh no, let's try and delete some files. Um, BD2, what other ones? I want to delete five and 13. Um, and let's edit drive C code bot. I don't know how to select that without adding an extra slash. All right, whatever. Um, bot uh, log.nas state.nas um, logic.nas. Um, extern printf global log incoming. All right, this is going to be log outgoing. I don't see any outgoing logs there. But it could be because um, we're not doing the test bot thing. Bot test. Oh, it works. All right, so let's just change this to sub stack pointer. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I think that's four elements, like one, two, three, four. And I'm going to assume that's four elements not four bytes. That's a bad idea, right? Assuming that, um, <laughs> that should be eight. Yeah. Eight. And we will know if it works because we will return properly or we will crash DOSBox. Oops, it should be bot test. Hey, E A. Uh oh. Uh oh. 
Um, so let's try four instead. I think it's an integer is, I don't know, maybe it's 16. Oh dear. All right, well, no, I'm supposed to be adding it. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, sweet, sw sweet Dospot, I'm sorry. The stack grows downwards. I was just making the stack bigger. I did it. I did it, guys. Um, let's also just make the bot test run uh, w make first. There we go. All right. Um, so we push some stuff. And then we pop it. Uh, returns nothing. Um, cloppers, nothing. And then we'll have log incoming. Okay, then we're going to go to state and we're going to replace, no, it's gonna be in load logic. Logic. And we're going to call log incoming. We don't use send packet either. Let's do bot test. It should be wmake end bot, I think. Can you do that in DOS? Where, where's my space key? My target, okay. wmake end end bot, okay. Um, um, DOS, um, and, and can Google search that? Big DOS programming. Um, and, and executes this command only when the first one succeeds. So say I do w make and bot. Okay. So that's passing everything on the command line there. But that's not what I want. Um, DOS batch quit on failure. Check the error level in an if statement and then exit B. That's command. Or go to error to define label. Are you set? But, but you don't understand this is not working, right? I can't do w make or bot. I can do w make or bot. Oh, 
Okay, I guess DOS doesn't have... Uh, does DOS not have an end thing? This is fine. This is... What, what the hell is this? What is this? Why is this here? Why are you just putting MS build stuff there? That's not good. Thus, a batch um, or a statement. Um, DOS batch or and so do we really not have an end statement? Buddy. Why? Wait, is it a single end? No, that would have been really scary, actually. Um, oh, I don't like any of this. Military stuff. All right, this is fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to shove our wmake up here. wmake or exit B. Okay, we're gonna use a go to instead because that just closes the program. Do I not like the, we're gonna use go to end. And then down here, we're just gonna do and. I think that's how labels are done. Militaries are not very Jesus-like. I don't know if that's true. Okay, symbol login coming at not defined. So we're gonna have to extern that. Um, here. What just happened there? Why is that? So now the or is always? Wait, is that failing? Um, hmm, no, this is fine. We're just going to continue trying to understand this. Um, we have W make here or go to end. Um, so I guess it's piping it or I don't know. Um, set P if I not. Okay, so maybe we can use an if statement. If W make. If not W make go to, all right, let's try that. If not W, uh, is that just for variables? How do I, hmm, I feel like I'm in some level of, of pain. Um, batch script return codes. It's a lot of return codes. If error level contains the return code. So W make. If error level equal zero, go to end. That seems, that seems fine. No, it should be not equals to zero. This seems like code that is fine. DOS hell is designed for me. Uh, Okay, and then 
I assume that runs wmake. So let's just try and introduce an error. Well, I wasn't running the command. Would your personal hell just be DOS programming in DOS forever? No. So um, error level here. It's not working unless it needs to be zero. Syntax error. Okay. All right. Uh, let's replace it with false. And let's comment out the bot. I think that's how you comment stuff out. No, it's rem. Um, so we have false and then we have that there. Bad command or file name, false, false, true, zero. Oh, okay, what's something that can fail? Oh, it's fine. This is fine. Um, can we echo the error level? That would be a good start. I spelt it wrong. That's fine. I don't mean to get this sidetracked. I just, I, I wanted something that, I wanted something a little bit better than whatever this is. Um, DOS scripting error level. Is, is error level a, a thing? Um, uh, okay. There's, there's a lot of stuff happening here. If error level N, the first syntax provides compatibility with old bat files from the era of MS-DOS. If error level or error level. Okay. So, what if we just do if error level equals zero? If error level zero, what's that mean? Missing number? If error level equals zero, if error level zero, go to end. So then we would write echo bot, and then we go echo and uh, we're getting there maybe all right so that does end so what if we just do bot there and we go go to end and then we have end here and we skip over the end and we don't echo bot could this possibly be it? So then we fix the bug. It still goes to end. It still goes to end. What is the error level? I don't know. If error level zero go to end. Why? What is the error level? I don't know what the error level is. <laughs> Echo error level. Oh, okay, this is fine. If error level greater than equal number. So it should be if not error level one. Maybe. All right. This could be fine. It's not fine actually, it didn't work. If not error level zero. All right, maybe this is fine. That seems to have worked, but it will, will it work in the other case? Or does this just not do anything? It doesn't do anything. I don't, I don't know what my error level is. 
Oh, oh, this is this is a little bit of pain. Uh, let's get grab error level. Shell command if error level. Okay, so the first thing I want to know is understand what the error level is. Um, that seems like something I would want to know. So let's search up free DOS error level. Maybe that has an example. How to automate tasks with bat files. Echo done. Um, yep, that seems fine. Conditional evaluation. So we do my prog. To test if it runs successfully, you actually want to examine if the program returned a zero error level. Okay, so there's a special variable. So if error level equals zero, is there a way to echo? Echo variables in DOS. Echo error level. Echo is on. So I'm guessing it's not set. Does it not set error level in DOSBox? Maybe it doesn't set error level in DOSBox. That hurts. A lot of this is pain. Okay. So can we echo error level after we've done w make that seems fair echo is off so echo that just doesn't so we don't have an error level what if we just do set that should show us our environmental variables we do not have anything here but we might have the error level keyword. If error level zero echo success. So how about this? Um, if error level zero, we will echo success. And then otherwise we will echo not success. Um, we'll echo that in both instances, I guess. I don't know why. So, does this have success? Yes. Yes, it does have success. What about when we fix it? Does it echo success then? Yeah. Yeah. It always echoes success. Um, this is fine. I could do. Hmm. Oh boy. Um, so maybe this is a W make thing. W make. Um, w make error level. Error level is not error level. You know what, how about we try brute forcing that? If error level zero equals six, uh, we'll echo zero. If error level one, we echo one. That seems easy peasy. So this should echo, um, zero and one. Now, is there a way to make it only echo? Will it echo only one this time? It only echoes zero. Huh. 
Huh? So how about if not error level one? Uh, go to end. That seems like what would make sense. Yeah. What just happened there? Okay, so that fixes it. All right, so now it fails. All right, so did I just do it the other way around? So that should be if error level one. It goes to and. Otherwise it should run the bot. I think I did it. I think I figured it out how to do it. And then if I make it fail, it should now not run the bot. I did it. I'm a hero. I'm the I can't think of a famous programmer, but I'm them of programming. Okay. So now we probably want to um, add a timestamp. Um, let's go to log. Um, there's also printf, maybe printing it to a string might be a good idea. I'm not sure. Um, so let's see, dos get time. Can we get the time in seconds? Probably not, right? In 21. Did that say DOS function? That says dispatcher, not disaster. All right, so let's see. Time. Get time. Get date. Anything else? Get time gives us hours, minutes, seconds, hundreds. Um. Oh, that could be, that could work. What about date? Um, this is actually pretty terrible because, uh, it's not giving us the date in like, in seconds or something. That's kind of weird, but okay. Get time in seconds. Whatever. So we will get the hour, minutes, seconds, hundreds, um, and then the day, month, year. So let's just start off with um, our time format. So we're gonna make a timestamp. So what we're going to do is push um, call create timestamp, and that will give us a timestamp. That seems fair. And we're going to do global create timestamp. I don't need to global that. Um, create timestamp. Um, we'll just put a timestamp. It will give you a timestamp value. And so we're just going to use, um, as printf for this, I think. Um, do we have as printf? Probably right. As printf is printing it to a string. Yeah. So that would be car string car format. Yeah. 
So we're going to also need a buffer. Um, to hold this string. So we need a line buffer. That sounds similar to what we have. So let's go check down here, BSSS. You've got some code there. Nice. And let's put this in the logger code. Um, we'll call it time buffer. Uh, let's think about what the maximum time, the time format's going to be actually. Um, time format. Um, it will be. All right, we're going to format this um, to look like this. So we're going to have um, hundreds, which is HH. It's not how you write it, but um, seconds, minutes, um, hour. And then we're going to do year, month, we need to zero pad that and the day. We need to zero pad all of this. Um, so yeah, yeah, um, month, month, day, day. And that's basically the format we're gonna, we'll put a T in the middle of it, I guess, um, to make it an ISO 8601 format. I think they put a T in the middle. Yeah. So how long is that? Uh, that's 23. So let's use a buffer of 32 then, huh? Um, time buffer length, time buffer. Um, we don't need the length, do we? No, we can just write to memory and kind of ruin it. Although, we do want a null term. No, we'll, this will be null terminated. It'll be fine. I'll keep the length there for now though. So the time format will be um, we'll just start with u, u for unsigned integers, t, u, 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 dot, u. Um, that seems about right. Does sprintf null terminate it? Uh, null. S printf. Does S printf null terminate? Terminate. Um, the S and printf thing always null terminates. I guess we'll use SN printf then. <coughs> um, and I think that's the signature for it. Size T size. Uh, 
um, and that should return the amount written. Right, so then we have our format there. And we have our length there, which is fine. Um, remove that. So create timestamp. We're going to call um, SN printf, and we're just going to push some random values for now, like uh, push one, push two, push three, push four, push five, push six, push seven, push eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so it's only seven, I think. Um, then we will subtract all that shit from the stack, I guess. Oh, uh, it also needs the string. Yeah. So we push um, the length, uh, time buffer length, and also the time buffer. And then that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, so that's 18 elements we need to add back to the stack pointer. And then we return, I think. Um, that seems fine to me. And then we will call create timestamp. We should probably return the timestamp, right? Um, move AX. Uh, we'll just push it, whatever. Push time buffer. You know what? Let's just not do that. Oh no, we will. In case we want to like change that one day. One day. But we shouldn't return it. We can't return that, can we? No, it should be move AX time buffer. Uh, push AX. There. Um, and this club is AX, so we're gonna have to push AX and then pop AX. And this is also 10 values now. Oh, this is not good. This is a lot of junk. Is it gonna work? Um, let's try reading the code again, just to see. So when we log an outgoing thing, okay, so obviously it's not gonna work here. We need to push AX and push AX returns nothing. So the implication is that we're never gonna clobber anything and I guess it's call a save. Uh, push SI, push CX, CX, and then the timestamp. Then we call create timestamp. Then we're gonna push AX, push printf format. And then we do 10 X S I C X create timestamp A X and that seems fine. Um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Nine. Are we missing a value? Because One, two, three, four. I added two there. So, okay, four, that's one, two, three, four, five times two. I thought it returns on the stack as well. I guess we're gonna have to YOLO this, right? Um, we push in the string, one, two, three, four, five, times two. That should be 12, and this should be 20, right? Oh, this is gonna be not good, is it? Stack overflow, right? That's probably because I did a wrong. Uh, 
Um, that's okay. Yeah, uh, okay. So, um, SNPrintf has just printed nothing because I didn't give it the format. There we go. And that's also probably corrupted the stack. So I'll be surprised if it even boots. All right. So we have a bit of a timestamp there. Um, so now we have to grab the values from DOS. So we'll start with the date. So int 21 to a, um, so move ax to a zero zero int 21. Then we're going to push DL uh, sorry, CX. God, we, we are cl clobbering everything, aren't we? Um, uh, clobbers. That's fine. Um, no, I think the Coley should be handling the clobbering. What am I thinking of? Oh, in this case, yeah. So we need to handle clobbering A, C, and D. So we push CX. Um, push. I think we push DH, then DL. Then we move it to be to C and then we push um, ah, let me see if I can find it CH no wait yeah CH CL DH DL um, and then we're going to push AX push CX push DX Um, we don't need to save AX, um, pop CX, pop DX. And let's see if this works, huh? My room is getting dark. Um, is that a good sign? Invalid combination of opcodes. That's what I thought. Um, we can't push just junk onto the stack, can we? Um, so let's see if there's a solution to this in our reference book. Uh, it looks like we can't push small registers onto the stack and that's fine. Um, before we do that, let's just see if like we are pushing the high and low together. I know we are pushing them together actually, but printf wants to read it a word at a time. So, uh, we, we want to look to see if there's a push or um, a low register. Did I already open up? No. So we're looking for push. I'm going to turn my light on. Otherwise, I'm going to live in darkness and that's not the life I've chosen. There we go. Have I run out of tea? All right, so we have push here, memory register, segment registers. All right, um, yeah, so it's not gonna, it, it can't push the low, can it? Push F, uh, push AX, push DX. Um, 
x86 push low register. Uh, push F, push Q. Uh, we're looking for push, 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 push. Push word, double word or quad word. So no pushing bytes. Light NT, what are you, some kind of well-adjusted person? I'm trying. Um, push byte. Can push pop be less than four bytes? All right. All right. So let's think about this. Let's, let's sip a little bit. How do we solve this problem? Um, I kind of thought this wouldn't work in the first place because pushing a, a kind of virtual register, whatever. Um, so we're gonna have to clobber AX, I think, basically. Um, this is not gonna look good. Move, what the hell did my keyboard just do? Move AX, DX, DH, push AX. We'll use an intermediate variable. It seems like the best way to do it. If we can do it this way, um, can we move the registers? It seems like possibly not. Um, but whatever, we'll try it. CH. Um, push AX, God. Um, then this is gonna be DH and DLO. All right, let's see if this works. No, so moving the registers here is not actually going to work either. So, let's think about this a bit. Um, let's go. <laughs> Let's not go actually. Um, not going. So the obvious thing to do here, yeah, we're stopped. We've come to a complete stop. Everyone just, I was gonna say get off. I was gonna tell everyone to get off, but uh, there's no getting off here. This is very uh, flaccid, if you will. This is a limp situation. Um, let's circle back to our previous code though. Uh, and let's actually pop those in the right order. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's like a stack, if you will. Um, so what we could do is just push, um, We could just push the dang thing twice and then we could mask it somehow. Um, we can't mask a memory address, I don't think. Um, we could shift it and then mask it. Let's check in here if we have anything that can do this. So like we have the mov instruction and that didn't help us at all. Um, Unless I was not being a smart person and I should have written mov b, but that does make you kind of think for a second, should I be writing a push b then? Could this be solved with push b if that is a real instruction that NASM recognizes? push B, it thinks it's a label. All right, so um, mov B um, AX DH push AX um, DL push AX. Um, then we'll just try that here. Let's just see if that stops the bleeding over there. Mov B 
inconsistently redefined. Um, that's right, we don't have mov b, do we? We have mov byte. Would that work? Instruction expected, okay. But can we push a byte? Perhaps. Invalid combination. I'm sick of your shit a little bit, okay? Mov AX, and then we go to the next line, and we do push AX, and then we go to the next line. Um, no, and then we turn off the macro. There. Let's try that. Yes, we have macros. Invalid combination of opcodes. Oh, sweet boy. Um, x86 move high register r8 so it looks like we can only move between um eight registers Move AL to seg offset. What? All right, I have some, I have some plan, some ideas if you will. But the first thing we're gonna do is just going to go back here. And we're going to just start pushing rent, uh, pushing, um, just values and we'll push, um, some more values here. Five, six, seven, eight. And I think there was a nine there. One, two, three, four. No, okay, so the first one was like that there. Four, five. Let's see if this works first. It does not work. Um, that is a little bit strange. Not a fan of, of that actually, but let's think about this. Uh, I'm gonna just comment out these calls here. AX, okay, yeah. All right, I see what I did wrong there. God, the stack, why is it gonna be like that? All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, perfect. Let's add back these mobs. And let's start small this time. And not mobs, these pushes. Do I like my stacks? My stack is fine. So here's what we're going to do. We're gonna allocate some space on the stack. Um, then we're going to move, um, 
A H to the stack pointer. Is that what we should do? So this is for the time. So we should probably switch these around actually. Um, and this would be D H. Or is it D low? Two A. Wait, this should be two C D L. And since the stack is just a place in memory, we can happily move our st Okay, we cannot, can we? Maybe I need to specify that it's a byte. Bruh, what? This is bullshit. Why can't I do this? I've allocated space on the stack. I wish to, I wish to make a deposit to the, <laughs> I wish to make a deposit to the stack. How about this? We do push one. A valid combination of opcode and operands. So we want to move a byte. Should I be using movb instead? Okay, let's go to Nazim's website. That's probably down. It's not down. We've been blessed. We've been blessed. What if you CJ the stack? I don't bloody well know. All right. Um, let's go down to the appendix. Um, instruction list. Introduction. Special instructions. Conventional instructions. Let's search for push. Push, okay, so there's no reg 16. Let's find mov. Memory reg 8, 386. Wait, that's you, mov. Mov SB? Okay, all right, here we have all the, <laughs> all the goddamn mobs. Um, reg S reg. That's the segment reg register. We're looking for reg 8. So we should be able to move reg8 to memory. Oh. Move reg8 memory. Reg8, reg8, move. All right, reg8. So we can't move reg8 between two. Can I read in something to reg8? Let's just see what the hell we can do with this reg8. Compare, yeah, and, yeah, add, yeah, ADC, yeah. All right. Compare, compare, mov, blessed by NASM, yeah. So we can move our register to memory or another um, reg8. Or we can move memory to the reg8 or two reg eights between each other i'm not too sure why there's two of those there's one here and there's one here maybe it's like the other way around move immediate to reg8 move sx that's 386 we're not using that that's or um ssb okay um so we have a move here And we want to move our reg eight. AVX 512, I get you. Um, pseudo operations. Uh, we do want to look into um, just how you do a, um, the NASM language layout of a NASM source line. Label instruction operands. Explicit address size and operand prefix. You can also name the se segment register as an instruction prefix. 
use the name of a segment. All right, move at ESBX. All right, is it because I haven't specified a segment? That could be the issue, right? Move SSSP. And then if we push zero, and we W make it, and we hope that this is going to be in the stack pointer. Invalid effective address, oh dear. Oh no. We probably can't do that with the stack pointer. Although, can we do it with ES? Invalid effective address. What about DS? Invalid effective address. You're an in, you're a, you're a, you're a, rawr. All right, I forgot that. I forgot that on x86, we have our addressing issue. Um, bookmarks page 31. Bookmarks page 35. All right, so how do we address stuff? Stack segment, um, single index, SIDIBP. All right. All right. But I think the idea is that it wants us to define a base pointer, and we will do that. BP plus SS. BP plus S, okay. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We'll push BP, move SP BP. Pop BP. All right, and then we're going to do, um, the stack pointer is at BP. We should probably, yeah, so stack pointer is BP. We're in the data segment too. So what segment can we choose? SS, SSSP. So SS, um, wait, SI, DI, or BX, displacement plus, shit, let's just use DI. Uh, push zero, move stack. God, this is way too difficult. Here's what we'll do. Um, we'll push zero and then we'll do move SSD. Oh, this is such a headache. Okay. This might be the wrong way to do it. It might be better to just, um, to just mask it. I think that's what we're supposed to do. Um, let's look for a mask or it's and, no, it's, yeah, it's and. Yeah. So let's find the and instruction. And destination source. All right, but here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna push AX. We're gonna move, what the hell is CX? Okay, we're going to move, um, I think it's the D register and we're going to end AX with zero times um, FF zero zero to get the high byte. But then we have to shift it. Oh no, we can shift that fine actually. Um, so we can use shift right for that. 
I think. Shift right. That should fill it with zeros anyway. Shift right, and we'll shift it by eight bits. Actually, if we do this, we do, um, if we move AX DX, and then we end it with FF, then we shift DX um, eight, then we can, then we now have the um, DL is AX and DX is DH. Let's try that actually. So 2800, get date. This goes inwards out, so that should be 2C. So let's try and get the seconds then. Uh, 2C, DL and DH. So DL should be first and DH. So AX is DL and DX is DH. And then what do we have? Um, minutes and then hours. Should actually be around there. So let's do the same trick. Move AX, but with CX. So we have CX, AX is now CL, and then CX is eight. So that would be minutes would be AX and then CX. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna work. Oh, it compiled. One point two three eight eighteen. Oh, maybe. The seconds seem to be working, but the minutes and hours are not. Hour and minutes. Since the minutes jumped to 34 there. Um, hmm. Why wouldn't that work? Is the time messed up in DOS? We have CH is the hours. Um, and this is going to be CH. So that would be one, two. Why is the second always starting at one? Something's wrong here. Two 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 oh seven. Hmm. That smells like I've got these around wrong. Um, it's the exact same value, which isn't good actually. Maybe I've messed up here. Um, so AH, maybe I've been putting AL, I'm not sure. No, something's wrong. AH2A, AH2C. Let's just uh, fill that with zeros and not worry too much about that for now. 
So AH, we put 2A in it. Two A, what if we don't put anything in it? And we just move um, DX zero. That should give us zeros. And what? All right, let's try and create our own date here. So, um, DX, DL is going to be one, DH is gonna be two, and then CX and whatever are going to be that. So we will pretend that we've run an interrupt. Now we should see those values, one, two, three, four. Um, that works surprisingly. DL, DH. So DL, DH, CL, CH. All right. AH equals 2C. Could it just be that it doesn't know what the damn time is? I don't know about that, but let's move a bit forward, but with the year and date. So 2A should be day, month, year. So push CX and then we'll just have to copy this day month. And it's the same um, format. One. Does this not have a clock? Bruh. Um, main. This doesn't have a real time clock, does it? Or it may not. Um, okay, let's just try and figure this out. Oh, we could have figured that out by running date, right? Date. Seven, eight, 22. Time. Or five fifty six thirty nine. So someone's wrong, and I don't think it's me this time for once. Um, hmm. Is int 21 2a? Uh, the stream has got about tw 20, 20 minutes left, so hopefully we'll be able to fix this. Um, and then we'll have to print it to a file. Um, so 2c, let's find the DOS file source misc DOS. Um, 2c date time G give me my my clock all right 2a get system date so 2a get system date actually now would be a really good time to use the debugger um so let's do that. Um, 
set bot host equals 10.0.2.26666. So after the last stream, I actually sat down and figured out how to use the debugger. Unfortunately, all that knowledge has just left my head. Um, so, <laughs> so it was for naught. Um, I think there was like a button to do optional stuff. All right, uh, all right, it's it's fine, it's fine. Uh, we are going to go to modules, and then we're going to go to log. That's something I learned. We can just do this, and it will be fine. And we'll do create timestamp, and then we will run to cursor. All right, um, window, and let's look at our CPU registers. That didn't do anything. I don't think. Did that do anything? It didn't say it did anything. Uh, so AX is 860A, that's fine. I think DX is one, so that's zero one D. Okay, let's just try looking at this in 21. So before we do this, CX and DX is zero and zero one. And there's still that. There's still that. AX is just, it's returning something in AX? Why is that? Why is that? In fact, if this hypothesis is true, we should be able to do move CX zero, move DX to zero, and we should just get zeros for everything, right? Uh, yeah, I know, unable to read buffer. I get you, buddy. Okay, so immediately I realized something really, really, really not smart. I'm calling the wrong interrupt. That looks closer to what we want. 39, that's 32, 3, 51, 17, that looks correct. 32, so the date is wrong, and the seconds are wrong. Okay, let's open this up in the debugger then. Uh, we don't need to use the um, bot host for this. So let's go to window modules log. And we're going to do F7 to run the cursor. All right, window CPU registers. So these are hexadecimal in 21. So CX, again, these are hexadecimal. So let's see what we get back. We have 1134, 1244. So let's open up Python, Python 3. Um, so zero times 11 is 17. So that would be the hour. So AX, um, so CX is, the hour and minutes, because that's the actual date there. So let's see how this gets processed. We should end up with AX being 11 and DX being 34, I think. Um, what? 
dx is 12 and ax is 44. That's not entirely what I wanted. Let's try and step through it, how it does it with CX. The so CX is 11 and 34. Oh, of course it wasn't. I just looked at the DX stuff. So AX moves to CX, CX moves to AX, and then we end it to get 34. And then we shift CX to get 11. Then we push AX and CX. And then we do that. And then we do a similar thing here. I feel like I've just got the order wrong. So let's try and read this a little bit. Um, of course, I've left Whatcom and that has caused crashes. All right, so 175431. Point thirty eight. The time seems fine. The year and month and date do not. All right. So let's see. The year is the last one, which is DX. Just to do a quick count, we push four things over here. Yeah, so DX is, um, so we do 2C, 2C, should be 2A. Is that where my problems are coming from? Hey, now we just need to pad these a little bit. And we can remove the parentheses around those. So we want to pad the numerals. Um, so let's see. How do we do that? Value should be zero pad. So let's just try zero U. Probably don't need to worry too much about the year. That didn't zero pad anything. Actually, let's actually remove the interrupt so we can get zeros and then work on padding it real quick. No zero padding. All right. Position if any gives the minimum number of digits. So this should maybe be four, two, 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 two. I think that's how this works. Um. <laughs> that that padded it. Uh, I didn't want it to pad. When zero is printed with an explicit precision zero. All right. Um. So how does the padding work?
Alright, so I specified the, the field um, padding, not the actual zero padding. How foolish of me. All right, now let's try using actual interrupts for that. And I just want to set that to that because I want to set my entire AX register. Um, I don't know if that's a obsessive compulsive thing. But we shall see. Hey, we've got dates now. Um, that's pretty cool. And so next stream, we will work on logging to file. Um, so where's our to do? So the last thing I want to do is just quickly search up x86 push um, reg8 to stack. Uh, push date to stack. I guess I could just try and see what Whatcom does. Push versus move SP. See, the thing is, if I, if I do actually start writing stuff to the stack, um, I'd have to zero it first if I wrote it and then I just moved it, but that wouldn't work very well. Um, Oh my god, I just realized I'm a giant over-engineer JPEG person, whatever that means. We have to go back. We have to fix this now. So instead of all this, if we instead move AX0, then what we can do is we can just move um, AL um, D high, I think. AX, or am I doing low then high? I just push AX. See, I just, I have, I can push a full register. I just need it to be zero. So I move AH to zero. Um, then we push AX, then we move um, AX with AL with CL. And then we move, um, sorry, AX with CH, then push AX. So I think that's how it works. Let's try again. Why did I do it the other way? I don't know. So we'll try pushing high than low in both cases. I was, I was being arm brained, I think. No, nope, that works all good. 
Um, so yeah, I do have a 16-bit register I can push. I just need to do it properly. Um, and I guess I can finally give in and put the 2C there like that. Uh, arm brained, yeah. Risk brained, uh, more like it. Or just not good at assembly. And I'm learning. Can I optimize this a bit further? Well, I guess I could change that to like move DH zero and then push DX, but like, if I'm just doing this, it makes it very clear what's happening. Um, and then we have our time format there. Um, is there any other way we could probably push? Let's see, the thing is, it's, it's like a 16-bit value. So we want to push a 16-bit zero padded value to stack. And the only way is to either I guess do it this way. Um, unless there's like uh, x86 move reg82 m16, but that's what we're doing here. Hmm. X86. We want something that does a push or a move and then zero extends. Can we push reg eight? Push the corresponding 16-bit or 32-bit register. Okay, um, yeah, that makes sense. So I think this is the best way to do it. Um, and the stream is over in a second, so we did it. Um, actually, no, we didn't do it. Because what we can do here is be a very smart person and do push BP. Uh, uh, sorry, move BP SP. And then we move um, SP BP. I think I finally get why this is done then. I get, I, I understand why there's a base pointer. I guess we have to push BP and then pop BP. Let's see if this works. that would be there. Um, that would be there too. I think. Yeah. Actually, what am I doing here? Um, I just need to, okay, I'm not doing a full prelude. I just need to do it for this, right? So before I do all the pushing, I just need to switch the stack pointer and the base pointer. So push BP, move BPSP, 
And then we pop BP there. I think that's right. Push AX, oops, push BP, move BP, pop BP, pop AX. All right, let's see if this works. Hey, that works, I think. Um, do I want to do that though? I mean, it makes the code easier to modify. So right, why not? But I guess that's one reason why you would have a base pointer, right? So you can use as much stack as you want without worrying too much about offsets. Although, I don't know, I'm fine with, I don't know, I'll leave it like this because that's just a lesson I've learned. Um, yep, 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 yep. Uh, oh, I probably should change this to this and this to this just because I have some data in the lower register. Um, and I want to be pure. You understand what I mean? Let's do one more bot test and we'll check the time. 1054, 18, 10, 54, 20. <coughs> Pure jokes, yeah. The only last thing that I would possibly do is try and specify the message prefix, like um, instead of calling printf there, uh, that'll be something for next stream when we build the um, actual print stream and then we'll have to print it to file and to the screen at the same time. All right, that's everything. See you later, Gators.